Greetings, my name is Meticulix, here with another computer tutorial. This one on how to create a message box in VB script that stays up while the rest of your script continues. But first, a quick disclaimer. I've tested this script in Windows 10, Windows 7, and Windows XP. However, if you're using Windows XP... Why are you still using Windows XP? Don't worry, I won't tell anyone. Alright, with that out of the way, let's get started. For example, this message box says processes are running. Now in order to start the processes running, I would have to click OK, and then this message box would represent a process. And once that finishes, here's process 2. And finally, the finished dialog. So I cannot have this message up while these processes are running, which can be a little frustrating. So I looked around, and I couldn't find much of a solution. However, I did come across a workaround by Simply Coded, which, if you're into VBScript at all, you should definitely check out his tutorials. And I found another one by Dennis. Link is in the description. This one is closer to what I was looking for, however, it didn't supply any functionality to the message box buttons. In my particular usage, I wanted to be able to cancel the script from the message box. In order to accomplish this goal, I reverse engineered his script and, with much information taken from Simply Code's videos, came up with a solution. The core concept being creating a second script that will display the message box, which will allow the host script to run its task. So first things first, we're going to start off option explicit, just to make sure everything's on a level. And next off, we're going to set up our variables. So as you can see, I have six variables here, and we'll get into the detail once they come up. Next, we set up our file system object, set that to FSO. Our create shell object, got that to object shell. Oops. Then we also need a WMI service. So it's WMI service equals get object, win MGMTS, impersonate, impersonation level, equal impersonate, and then all this stuff. This will give us access to utilize and control processes. And you're gonna see why we're gonna need that in the future. Next, we need to set up where our message script is going to reside. To resolve that issue, we just set a variable temp location. And temp location equals object shell, expand environment strings, and then temp. You'll notice if you search for this folder, percent temp percent, it gets you to Windows temporary folder. This way, we can keep our message script out of the way and out of our hair. But now we need to uh, create our script. For that, we set up temp VBS, and temp VBS equals temp location, which is Windows temp folder, plus a backslash, and then the name of our script. In this case, I've been calling that progress message temp that VBS. Okay, so there are our variables. But we need to do one additional task, and that's to create a sub. This sub will allow us to terminate the progress message, or the secondary message here, through uh, this host script. So we're just going to call it terminate message VBS. And then we got this bunch of code. Dim call processes and set call processes to WMI service dot exec query. And this, if you want to, you can just put this all in one line, but I find it easier if it's on two lines, or multiple lines, I should say. So, select any process from Windows process for Windows 32 processes, where name equals C script or W script, and the command line like progress message temp .vsb, VBS. This will search our processes and see if our progress message is in our processes and only our progress message. This way, it will not terminate any VBS script that's up. Once it does, does that, for each find message and call processes, find message terminate. So this will terminate any progress message temp VBS process. And then finally, just add a next, and then close the sub. So then we'll just call this sub whenever we need to terminate our message script. But what is our message script? Well, if you will follow me to the top, we'll get a look at it. So you want to append this to the top of your script. 
we're going to start off option explicit again. Also, note that I have commented this out. That is important. And next, we set up a do loop. And for this example, I'm just starting a message box that says process is running. And then I'm closing the loop. This way, this message will stay up no matter what you do. And that's it. So you will notice it is just four lines. We'll come back to that later. And I've just got this here to separate the second script from the first script. So this is our primary script. And this is what's going to be implanted into our second script. OK, now that we got all that together, let's start assembling some code. Just get this little divider here. So we're going to start out with first things first. Before you do anything else, whatever your script does, the first thing you have to do is actually create your message script. So FSO, create text file, temp VBS. We already set that up, path, name, etc. Then what you do, set edit file to equal FSO, open text file, W script script name one. What this is going to do is this is going to read our script. It's going to read what we have going on here. Following that up, for copy line equals one to four. Remember our message script was four lines. Copy text, so it's going to copy and copy text equals edit file read line. So it's going to open the script. And it's going to read the lines. And currently, so it's on line one, it would read line one. Once it reads line one, we need to fix it. Because currently, this is commented out. If we just put this in our message script, nothing's going to happen. So we need to fixed text equal mid copy text two. This is going to start one character in and then take the rest of the text. Now that we have our fixed text, set temp message equal FSO open text file temp VBS 8. So this is going to open our message script and then append fixed text to it. Actually, I believe that is the next line. Here we are. It's going to append that to our message script. Once it's done that, we're going to close our second script and repeat. So Line one, it'll read it, copy the text, fix the text by removing the comment, and then it's going to open our second file, append our fixed text, close it, and then now go to line two, and then line three and line four, until our second script now has our appended code. And finally, you want to close reading our primary file, which is this script. I also like to add a bit of a time delay once everything's all said and done, just to make sure the second script is up and running. Again, this may be optional. Now our second script is created. So let's say you want to call it. Very well. All you have to do is object shell that execute. This will open up wscript.exe and then open up tempvbs with wscript, just to make sure it's using all the proper uh, necessities. Now our temp message is open. So pretend this message box is a process. This would be what you want to run, say installing a program or searching for files. But now that the second message is open, that message box is activated. But this process can still continue. Then when that process has finished, you call our sub terminate message VBS, which we created up here. This will go through, look to see if our message VBS is in the process. And if there is a process, it will terminate it, therefore taking out our message box. Now, once everything's all said and done, the last thing you want to do is to delete the temp VBS. This way, it cleans it up your temp folder so it doesn't leave any clutter or residue. And then, we just have a message box that says processes have finished. All right, just a little overview. Your script will look something like this. At the beginning, you need to have what your message will provide. In this case, it's just a message box in a do loop. You have to make sure it's commented out so it will not activate once you activate this script. Then you have your primary script of what you want done. And finally, before anything else, you have to call or you have to create your message script 
and then call it whenever you need it to be activated with a process. And then terminate the message once it's done. And then at the end of your script, you will want to delete that message file. So what's this look like in action? Well, I'm going to open this up. You'll notice process is running. You'll also notice this is a process. So this is from our second script. This is from our host script. This would be whatever's going on. And as I stated before, this is in the do loop, so this is not going anywhere. But once I click OK, it terminates that. And now this process is finished. So let's get a little more interesting. If I open up our processes here, and if I also open up our temp folder, you will see exactly what's going on. So I start up the script. Notice that there are two scripts in our processes, and, process, and progress message temp has appeared here. Now then, when I click OK, it terminated our message script. So it disappears. It also disappears from our temp folder. Now I click OK, and there goes our host script. So that is the core concept of this progress message here. But let's get a little more interesting and show you just what you can do with it. So here's a script I whipped up earlier. It's primarily the same concept, but it's got quite a few added features. You'll notice down here, same thing, except now it's copy line 1 through 29. Because now, let me just add my status bar, start line 1, line 29. So it will copy the first 29 lines, and it will remove the comment. Append it to the temp ABS, same as before. But this time I have added the additional functionality of receiving variables from the host to this message VBS. And I've also allowed the temp VBS to kill the host script. Now let me show you what I mean. So up here, I've done primarily what the same thing I did in the host script. I have added the WMI service and created a sub to allow me to terminate the host VBS if you click cancel in a message box and then it will quit this script and it will delete this script therefore taking care of everything in itself. In addition to that if there are no arguments it will display a certain message box. If you have one argument it will display a second message box. So in this case they're the same message boxes but the first one if there's no arguments just a status one. If there is an argument it will say status and then the argument. And each of them, if you click OK, because they're an OK cancel message box, if you click OK, it just goes through the loop. If you click cancel, it will call our terminate host VBS sub, and it will terminate the host VBS, and then delete this VBS, and terminate this VBS. So let's see this in action, shall we? When I open this, now it says, this is our message. This is our process. Process 1 is running, whatever process 1 would be. This is our host. Our message script, click OK, just continues the loop. Click Cancel to end loop. So now, when process 1 finishes, it will terminate this and open up our second one. As you can see, now it says op, uh, status second, and process 2 is running. Again, this is just stuck in a loop. Clicking OK one final time, all processes have finished. And this is from a host script. But if I want to cancel our process, I can go and click Cancel, and now it says Loop Canceled. Again, a visual aid may uh, prove beneficial. Going back into our temp folder, pop this open. OK, progress message is here. We also have two scripts. Clicking OK, nothing's changed. Clicking OK, we're down to one script, and our message has disappeared. But if I go and click Cancel, takes out the host script, it still deletes the message script. Now clicking OK takes out the message script. So there's a lot you can do utilizing 
um, the script in this manner. For instance, with sending arguments, what the arguments are, you can have the scripts communicate back and forth as if they were one script. And this can be very, very useful for feedback. If you need something to happen, you need to tell the second script, and then the second script can tell the first script what to do and where to go from there. So veteran scripters may be asking a question, why don't you just use the right line function right out? Why append the second script to the top of your host script? Funny you should ask that, because I attempted it that way. Let me show you what happened. This script is a slightly variant of the last example I showed you. It's a bit of a simplified version. There's a good reason for that. If you move on down here, this is what would create the message script at the top. Just create it, and then right line, and then close it, and then your second script is created. But you'll notice that everything is encased in quotes, naturally, because it tells it what to write. These are words. These aren't variables. But when you get down to something like a message box, a message box has quotes in it. So, and sometimes the and symbol. Therefore, every quote and every and symbol needs to be replaced by chr34 and chr38, respectively. On top of that, you need to encase those in the and symbols to add them, naturally. So when you get something like a message box, you end up with all this garbage. Message box, quotes, and then and ch34, and OK, continue loop, and ch34, and ch38, and vb new line. OK, this is part of the message. And vb38, and, I mean, I'm sorry, chr38, and chr34. You can notice that it gets kind of complicated. In fact, even at the end, you just need to have the parentheses in quotes. So if you're going to have a very complex message script that's communicating from the host from the message or from the host to the message and vice versa, it can get mind boggling to say the least in a hurry when you're trying to write out your second script in this manner. On contrary, when you do it the aforementioned way, it's just as simple as writing the script and commenting everything out. So that's why I choose that method over this one. Again though, for example, open this up, our message from our second script in the do loop, process is running, kills our message, process is finished. Or if I wanted to kill the host prematurely, click cancel, click cancel. So again, if you prefer going at this method, by all means go ahead. I'm just not smart enough to comprehend what needs to go into it. So I hope I was able to coherently describe how the script works. Well, that's it for now. So until next time, goodbye. Greetings. My name is Meticulix. Here for another... Oh, the recycle bin's full. I don't want that.